with you start with. Hello, hello. Welcome to Trail Talk. Hey, everybody. I'm so glad you could join us here at the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center. We're in our, um, well, this is our Oklahoma History Heroes room right now, uh, Rick. This is Rick Rogers. Now, many of you who are watching may re even recognize Rick. He, were you born and raised in? No, I, I was, some of my family were, but I grew up in Norman, or okay. Northern Norman. Okay, and so you moved to Duncan, in 1965 to start to practice the law 1965 i was just a wee baby <laughs> when mr rogers moved to duncan but I, we are so glad he did he has he was just talking about um some of the many uh many places that he has contributed in our community just a little bit of everywhere, I'd say, yeah. through yeah. the years. You've been here for they a Let me serve time. one term and then kick me off and go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they don't pass the word around amongst these organizations, do they? <laughs> they must not talk to each other. They must not. I suppose not. <laughs> but, I'm glad they didn't. <laughs> we are so glad to have Rick Rogers with us today. And um, when you when uh, it, the screen first came live, you guys saw some wood carvings. He is a very talented wood carver. Yeah. And um, I think he's he's been at it for a long time. So he's gonna talk to us about, um, about wood carving, do a little bit of demonstration kind of thing, kind of the nitty gritty part of it. And then also talk about some of the pieces that he's made, which he brought, you brought some very interesting well, thank you. pieces with you today. Just a few samplings. Yeah, well, it, it's it's enough to get you interested for sure. Now I don't want to uh, leave out that your lovely wife Carolyn, Carolyn. she is the crepe myrtle lady around That's here, true. and um, she's anyway. They're they're both just great assets to our community. We're very blessed here in Duncan to have. I've been here longer, life. but she has more friends than I. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you. Can say, I think you've been busy. Is what I think. Yeah. That, that we he's been stop. busy yeah so um let's let's talk about it. you mentioned earlier that you actually were carving things when you were a boy i started out as a uh, as a young person about 10 or 12 years old i couldn't afford my own fishing clothes so i would look in the sears and roll up catalog and take a piece of wood and carve those and then buy the travel books to put on there so i made my own lures Did you catch any I, fish with them i have a few a few <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the trick. <laughs> yeah. You can carve, but do they work? Yeah, well, it, I was a better carver than a fisherman. I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So, but um, did that kind of, I mean, it sounds like you were kind of doing it out of necessity, but you must have had some urging or something that you, you thought you could do that. You know, it, not it, everyone feels that way. Evidently, it's uh, inherited. My grandfathers did a lot of carving, but he did not have the tools that I have. Mm -hmm. various woods so he would use whatever he could find whether it's peach seeds or or all kinds of different things and he would uh, make his own knife and he would carve these various things right and uh, i had a few of his objects which were divided up at the time mm -hmm. when he passed but uh, Those, so that maybe could be... it, maybe it's in the blood right well and having something of your grandpa's yeah. that could be a little in you know, encouragement. Absolutely. Right there, an inspiration. We learn from those before us. Yes, that is correct. Well said. So, um, so did you always carve then? Did you always? No, I kind of. You're not a whittler. I went in, no, I'm not a whittler. I went into hibernation as far as carving is concerned for a number of years. And then whenever I moved to Duncan, I was too busy to carve. Mm -hmm. So, the inclination was still there. And Wayne Miller, one of my good friends now deceased, was a contractor here in town, but he was what I call a master carver. And he was top of the line. And, and he encouraged me to come over and join the wood carvers group that they have here in Duncan. And it was later named the Chisholm Trail Wood Carvers. And, and so uh, how long ago was that? Approximately... I would say over 15 years ago, okay. 15, 18 years ago. I was just curious how long that Wood Carvers Association has been together. As a that group, like that's a about time. it, because Wayne had been carving longer, but he didn't have a 
set group of people, just those that wanted to come in and carve with him. But it really became more of a uh, tight group as whenever uh, about, I'd say 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And then Joe Norton and uh, many of the others that uh, uh, carving. Mm -hmm. And so we would meet at Wayne's place, mm -hmm. carve twice a week, Wednesdays sometimes and Saturday mornings sometimes. And if you could make it fine, if you didn't. Right. So um, I, th I think that that's an interesting idea. So do you gather um, to learn from each other, encourage each other, just hang out together? Well, I mean, we gather primarily like some ladies do in beauty shops. We talked about world problems. I don't know what he's talking about. And we you solved, you solved them, right? We solved all the problems of the world in there while we're carving. And then every once in a while, someone will say, I've got this, what's, I've got this problem, or what do I do with this knife, or I'm stymied here on this piece, or I need this help, or I need a new idea of what to carve. Mm -hmm. So we bounce things around like that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all just kind of a mutual help type situation. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great idea, uh, and, you but know? The camaraderie is the real purpose right. of it, because I can carve at home and do most of the mm -hmm. time. But it's nice to get together with other people that like to do some of the same things mm -hmm. as a hobby and that you relate to and and uh, really enjoy the company. Mm -hmm. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug them. Uh, the Wood Carvers, Chisholm Trail Wood Carvers Association. Yes. I, I may be messing up the name of it, but they're going to start meeting again. You guys have been shut down well, as long as COVID's been here, as probably close to a year. Been close, shut down mostly over a year's period of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe the third Saturday of this month, we start again. I'm not sure exactly the location at this moment. Mm -hmm. And what I was going to say that should someone really want to know the location, then they can call me and mm -hmm. I can give them a number before this is over with or leave a card for okay. you. Okay. You to answer if they call you and say, where? Where can right. I reach Mr. Rogers well, I and tell I'll you, tell him. We'll put this information, okay. we'll we'll put the contact information in the comments right. on the uh, on this Facebook video. And so people are really interested in that mm -hmm. uh, carving and learning to carve. That would be that's good. A great place to start. So so let I, I thought I, that'd be a good place to plug sure. that. And I'm, great. Uh, I'm glad you did. Yeah. We have some carvers in there that probably should be here. They're a lot better than I am and probably a lot more articulate and knowledgeable, but at least uh, you asked me, so I'm here because mm -hmm. it's hard to turn down someone like you. But, oh, well, yeah, I, yeah no. Anything you want. Yeah, you know. exactly. That's the way it goes. <laughs> so um, that's right, man. If you're a wood carver and I don't know your name yet, I'm probably going to find it out from this fella, and I'll probably be asking you to come on and share some of your stuff. So get ready. And um, in addition to that, yes, we have lady carvers. Oh, uh, well, there you go. We have go. several lady carvers in, in your group, in this group, okay, and they're very well, good. There you go. I thought and, maybe it was a oh, guys hangout thing. No, it's so. not just a male thing. Mm -hmm. It's it's clean operation that we run. Okay. Language and everything and the jokes and all that. Mm -hmm. Very nice, mm -hmm. almost spiritual. Mm -hmm. Very good. <laughs> very good. I'm so glad. I'm glad you brought that up. Not meaning to exclude anybody. That's, no, that is wonderful. I don't okay. encourage children at all well because of knives you got to have a blood circle right yeah, yeah, i you, mean my boys were scouts i know about that blood circle thing <laughs> a little boy with a knife is <laughs> well i carried one all my life from uh, probably five years old but i never cut anyone else cut myself a time or two but yeah. no one else yeah okay so you've been carving then pretty regularly for 15 i would say that years? i would say that and sometimes i would be slack periods mm -hmm. Carvers are like painters or any other person that is a so-called artisan. They they tend to do it in moods. Mm -hmm. I like to be in the mood when I do it. I may work at it two or three hours. I may do it 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Maybe we do it all day long. It just all depends on what I feel like doing at the time. But I don't do it to force myself to do anything. It's no fun. Right, right, exactly. Well, let's let's start talking about, let's say you got the mood strikes. Okay, and you you need to go carve. You need to create something. Got it. Is the what's the first step for you? This may not be the same for everyone, but for you, do you 
decide what you want to carve or do you go looking for a piece of wood and the wood kind of shows you what you want to carve or how, how does that work? For you? And I'm sure everyone could be a little bit different, but what I do is I try to get an idea of what I would like to carve, something that I may see someone else has done, a picture, something I encounter, mm -hmm. something I kind of have an affinity for. And so then I decide what I would like to do, but I do not necessarily have all the specifics at that moment. Mm -hmm. Then I think, well, if that's a certain kind of wood I might want for that, or I might just take whatever wood I have available. It's not real scientific. It's kind of like uh, by the seat of the pants, I, <laughs> I want to do a wood that I can carve easy. Some woods are a lot easier to carve than others, to, and depending on what I want to carve. Now, the wood on those pieces right there mm -hmm. are all basically one type of wood. Mm -hmm. Now, I use a lot of different kinds of woods, which I have samples of here. Right. And I could do any one of those pieces and any of these woods, except for the walnut. Okay. The And you said? The horse. The horse is a uh, basswood is what I primarily use. Uh -huh. it comes out of Wisconsin, and Minnesota, and up in that area. Okay, and that's what the rabbit does. It so whether you're going to paint it or stain it, does that make a difference in what type of wood? Not you particularly. Do? No. Okay, I just because wondered if the grain or if anything I, would be right. A, and something a lot, you of, would a lot want. of the times before I paint it, and not before I stain, but before I paint, mm -hmm. I may use some sort of a sealer so that it doesn't just absorb, absorb, absorb. Ah, and right. then I can paint the colors. And this does seem, this does seem like very absor uh, absor absorbent. It would be. Wood. The reason, the reason, one of the reasons I use that wood, not only is easier to carve than others, this is a sample of it. You can't tell much from the camera there, but this is, this is called basswood. Most carvers, use this predominantly, mm -hmm. not exclusively. There are others I don't have here, like Tupelo that comes out of Mississippi. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you the reason I don't use that real often, but this is a catapa tree wood, which they have a lot of these here in Duncan. And those are the ones, are those the ones with the long beans? Beans and the flowers and uh -huh. the real, real large leaves. Uh -huh. The only wood that a carver can carve green without any seasoning is is the uh, catapa wood oh, really? and it has a beautiful grain as it you can does. see it does that's very pretty the grain is gorgeous and it's different no matter how you cut it it's different depending on whether you uh cut it lengthwise in one place mm -hmm. or you double saw it or whatever and i don't particularly try to do anything other than see the grain i like and i just take that piece of wood and work with it right right now, and um okay so so you had the basswood, Catalpa. This is the Tupelo. This is no. Oh, okay. I do not have oh, any Tupelo oh, here. But this is aromatic cedar. Okay. I generally make flutes, and uh, Dwayne Paul taught me how to make flutes. Mm -hmm. I have one here, not yes. out of cedar, but out of a wood out of Africa okay. that he and I use to make flutes out of a number mm -hmm. of flutes. Mm -hmm. But use the aromatic cedar works good. Yeah. I'll. So here's the. Here's the flute. That's a flute that I he taught me how to play. I made okay. six or eight of them. Uh huh. And they're all different. That that flute that's beautiful. I love the thunder. Is this like a thunderbird? Yes, it is. On there? A thunderbird. Uh -huh. and, and there's a and coyote. A wolf. Oh, a wolf. Coyote, yeah. Wolf, whatever. Little a howling dog-like animal yes. at the bottom. <laughs> right. But that and that's a beautiful wood. That's very pretty. It's it, real red whenever you carve it. I was wondering after, what color. It's extremely red, and uh -huh. I forget the name of it, but uh, we found some, I, I forget where, but we got some in Oklahoma City, and we slabbed it, and uh, I made uh, two flutes out of it, and he made uh, two flutes out of it. Uh -huh. And then, of course, I gave mine away. That's the only one I have left of that. I've given most of mine away to family members. Some of them are musical. Mm -hmm. and inclined and so I gave them that and I like to make the stands for my flutes I don't like I think it. that's a yeah that's a really nice way to display yes, it, it is. is on a stand like that I'll just then move I this have over. A, another stand at home that's made out of aromatic cedar that I have about six or eight of them standing on so you just make it like a dowel yeah, I'll take a, that was a dowel and I just uh -huh. cut it down uh-huh very but nice you could take any limb and cut it down I use crepe myrtle limbs and trim them down do a lot of things with crepe myrtle too Mm -hmm. And then this is a piece of walnut. This is walnut. Now, this is a small slab yeah, of very walnut, but thin. and walnut has different colors. Everybody thinks it's all dark, but a lot of walnut is very light. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of walnut, but 
I use it judiciously. It has to be something that I can use power tools on because oh, it's very okay. difficult for a knife to do much with it. Mm -hmm. Detail in it, yes, but not working it down from a large piece to a small piece. So this horse though is made of walnut. Yes. And there's, I mean, you did this with yeah, I a did, knife or I did power mostly tool. with knife, but also used the Dremel power tool and some other power tools. Okay. I have several wow. power tools that can grind uh -huh. and burr. Yeah, I mean, there's quite a bit of detail. And that's only one. Of, on, on this, it's not clear. Mm -hmm. Tina, it's still on me. There we go. Um, and the base is a piece of uh, stone granite. that came from, I believe, South Dakota, where the monuments are. I, I was going to say, this looks like Crazy Horse, the head of the horse and on the crazy, big Crazy does. Horse thing. And I have, I kept two or three horse heads, and I think uh -huh. most of the others I've given away. Very nice. I really love that part. And so, um, so let's talk about, I mean, you've got some tools laying out here. It looks like you're about to do some surgery on something, <laughs> some yeah. surgery on a yeah. piece of wood. And so um, you brought with you this little, now is this? This, this, this is Santa Claus. Yeah. And it, did you just rough cut this? Well, what I did, I had a flat piece of uh, basswood. Mm-hmm. And it was, wasn't quite that flat to start with. So then I, I cut it on a bandsaw, the piece I wanted. And mm -hmm. then I put it on a bandsaw, a, band, a belt sander, and made it smooth and flat. And then I took a drawing that I've made from a number of these Santas and a lot of the carvers in the group have because family members wanted something simple, but they wanted a piece carved for their trees that they had. And so a lot of us sat down and make maybe a dozen or two of different set of clauses or different mm -hmm. kinds of carvings. Mm -hmm. I've got a lot of variations and give them to family members at Christmas time. And we put her name on the back, I guess, so they can remember who did it. Right. And, and so you start with that. Start with that and end now up he's with that. end up with this right here. Of course, he doesn't carve it and then it turns out this color looks no. like you got to paint and I everything to paint too. It. Well, one thing but, about basswood is the reason I paint basswood, if you might like you ask that. Mm -hmm. The reason you paint basswood is because it has an easy to carve grain. It's straight, unlike this wood, which chips a lot. Okay, the cedar. But it, it's not a pretty grain like right, some of these. Right, mm -hmm. So therefore, I might use basswood. It's easier to carve, and then you can paint it any color you want mm -hmm. because you, you do not leave most things neutral. You paint most carving. Okay. All right. That's also, that's a good point there. So um, show us some of the tools that you would use to this. take this to this. And, you know, maybe just a, a little, a little bit of each one to kind of show us the different. Um, there it is. At okay. markings, I guess, or the different things that happen. I take to my pattern way. and lay it on there with a with a, uh, paper, mm -hmm. carbon paper, mm -hmm. and then uh, straight lines like this. I took that as an illustration. Yeah, I was going to say, let's turn it towards them there. I, I cut two lines to show the start of it, mm -hmm. and naturally, that's not finished. Right, right. But but then I can take this and I can cut around his mouth, which is kind of small, but. Oh, it's got to put the safety glove on. If you don't have a Kevlar glove on, you're asking for a lot of blood. But anyway. <laughs> we don't want that. No. Okay. <laughs> and one thing about carving, if you've never carved before, to this is for the audience. Uh-huh. Notice how a dentist does. He always braces. Hold that um, down there where they can oh. see it there. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I wasn't no, watching okay. myself. Okay. This is a V tool. And there's all sizes of V tools yeah, right um, here. Well, I'm going to show the V. Can you guys make the V out right there? That's why it's called the V tool. And here's a there's larger a version of the same thing. Ah, uh, yeah, that one's way easier to see. You can see that V on there nicely. And so, depending on what size of a dig or line you need to make, depend that determines which one. I want to do a lot of scooping with a V tool. I use that one. If okay. I want to do a lot, a small amount, I do it with that. Uh -huh. Then I outline it, and then I come back, and then after I, I cut the various outlines, I come back with other tools and start cutting it out with a mist mustache and all that. And then uh -huh. on the edges, um, 
this is basswood and it's real easy to oh cut. Oh my goodness, you I know, can't believe how easy that's going. Wow. It's not like balsa wood. Some people think it's balsa wood, uh -huh. it's not. Now you'll notice here, and I won't dwell on this, but I okay. start here and you see how it's going where I don't want it to go down straight to yes. the end? Yes. The grain's running that way. So uh -huh. I turn it around when it does that and you go from the other direction. Uh -huh. You don't carve one direction only. And I may sit here and make 50 different carving moves just to do the beard. Because if you don't, it'll follow that grain That's and right. snap off, right? And, and leave this is the worst one of all because it changes every half inch or so in some pieces. Mm. And you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth this way, that way. So mm -hmm. it's very laborious mm -hmm. to use cedar sometimes, but it's beautiful wood when you finish it. Right, right. And the grain and everything. So yes. Very and then, of course, you I made tools from various implements, an old kitchen tool. It was in the kitchen, rusty and better to throw away. My wife was going to throw it away. I said, I'll take that. And so he's talking about the knife blade itself was what it looked like it was used. It was, not gonna be, like, for it the was trash. about this long and it was about this wide. So I, I used a certain tool to cut it down, shaped it, grind it down and refinished it all. So I use this for large pieces of carving and when I want something mm -hmm. larger than that one, say. Mm -hmm. And I've got And so did you make the handle? No, I didn't, but I but I redid the handle totally. Did you make that handle? Nope. Okay. I did this, this. Oh, okay. But not this one. Uh -huh. now, I made I made handles like this one for some of my tools, but it all depends. Most of them I never buy. Only time I buy tools is this shape here that that I can't make. Yeah. Like yeah. a V tool mm -hmm. or a gouge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. These are so lightweight. Like also, knife. and another thing, one other thing we were chatting before uh, this started, he pointed out that the carving knives, the, the blades are, have a curve and then the sharp side, this is the sharp side under yes. here. And so the reason for that would be what? Well, the reasons that unlike pocket knives, which have a curving underneath and uh -huh. a, maybe some curve on top, this is for using the point. When you want to get in there with a point like this and carve in and cut out some of that back and forth until you get it the uh -huh. level you want it. Uh -huh. And by the way, I'll finish this one up and when, it, when I give it to you, it'll look like that. Okay. You put it on your tree. I will put it on my tree. You better believe it. It better have a name burned in the back of it like yeah. this one does. It, it takes too much time to sit here and carve it in front of you, but but I use different tools for that, the gouges, the V tools, okay. and the straight blades. So can you show us how you would make, like the there's the texture in the beard. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I'm gonna let them, so they'll know what I'm talking about here. There we go. So you can see the texture in the beard, it's kind of lines, the hat, the little fur on the hat has a different look and then the pom-pom, has an even different look. So it can Here's you show us kind of how you would do okay, some of that? If you can zero in, I hopefully see it's kind of small, I realize. Oh uh, yeah, the, the camera it can handle it. So yeah, I have to lay it hold. down to carve okay, it. Okay, he's so. gonna lay it down. Can you do that? <laughs> okay. And then I I like nothing is straight in a beard, of course. Right. So I, I wiggle around different directions and not all the same length. Mm -hmm. And I may go. And then hmm, and look at that. That just curves that wood right out of there. Curves. And I just keep doing things like that till I get it the way I want it. Okay. All right. And it's and so how would you make the little different. these little uh rounder would you use a V tool or something no, I'd use different? A, I'd use the gouge for that. Uh-huh. A smaller version of this one. Okay. I have a smaller one which is not out. Okay. But it'll 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 dig in. So it was the uh, other one. And you okay. can, I, and I just, make it so it look like a snowball. Yeah, yeah. And that's, uh, actually, uh, the other tool is better. This uh -huh. is too large here. Uh -huh. And uh, the other ones are not handy with that, not in front of us. If okay. I got everything out, well, you would not have right. a table covered. <laughs> but uh, it's this is something that I could make this and finish it in probably two hours or less. Okay, so go from here to here in about two hours. Correct. So something like that horse head that we were looking at, just for comparison's sake, how that, many hours would you that say? That would be about 45 hours or better. Wow. Wow. Because of the hardness of the wood and all that. Uh -huh. my, my duck, wood duck, took the longest time. 
The, this right That's here. That's a wood duck. Wow, wood duck is heavy too. It's a big piece of basswood. Ah. But. Um, so what? Big block of wood I started with, and I cut out the outline, and then I uh -huh. I just started whacking away with the wood. And so, how many hours would you say uh, this this, this one right here, probably with the painting on the wall? Uh, I would I'd say I have at least forty five or fifty hours in that. Wow. And then I purchased the eyes. I can okay. carve eyes, but they uh -huh. don't look as good as the glass eyes. Right, those those do look good. And so good. then I order the eyes to put in. And that's the exact colors of some of the, the wood ducks. Mm -hmm. And so again, you just add texture to the wood with your okay. tool. These I use like circles, as you can see right there. I sometimes use this to press in, mm -hmm. or I may carve them, or with I may the, wood burn them. I use the wood tip burning of, too. Like with the tip of a knife, yes. carve them like that. And then, then uh, or I can wood burn some of these. Now, every one of those feathers right there mm -hmm. is wood burn. There's a, probably 50 little wood burnings on each feather. These little. And I do that the, with a hot burning tool. Wow. And I put the feathers in with that. Wow. After I get through carving the shape, then I put all the little feathers in and the delineations. That's rather detailed. Uh -huh. You see a decoy that you shoot over, they won't have any of that detail. Right. So I'm trying to figure out it's backwards which way to go with this guy. Um, okay, so taking it from a block to this shape is is that half the time you spend on it? Is that a fourth of the time? What would probably you say? most of the time is the carving because of the shape of it, the feathers of and so forth. And the painting went fairly quickly. I paint real quick when I'm painting something. Like well, that. when you before you added all that detail, mm -hmm. just to get the shape of that, is would that have been about half the forty five hours? I would say at least that. Mm. Yes. That seems like. I mean, the detail I would think would go. It's, a bandsaw. I, I cut it out with a bandsaw. Oh. Okay. To, okay I, I cut out this shape with a bandsaw. Mm -hmm. Not underneath there, but just down to here. Mm -hmm. And then down here, I, I cut underneath that with bandsaw that way and then come in another way. And then, of course, as you can tell, I've got to do a lot of wood removal. Right. I look, at the, I look at the picture and I start doing that. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, that's a that's a huge commitment. <laughs> that, and this is why my wife won't let me get rid of this one. <laughs> Oh, I bet. I had a son. One of my sons wanted that one. And I said, "You have to wait till I pass away." Yeah. Well, it, it's a it, it is a beautiful piece. And, Absolutely. Uh, and the rabbit, the rabbit, it took a lot of time too, simply because of the years. And then, of course, the painting was very lengthy on that. I had yeah, you said this is thirteen. Thirteen coats, coats of black lacquer. Wow. After I had sealed it good, wow. so it would take the not absorb, absorb all the uh -huh. paint. And that, I didn't put a lot of colors on there because I just wanted it to look nice and sleek. Uh -huh. Well, I'm, it's, I mean, it's very well done, very nice, but I mean, even kind of muscular kind of thing. And that's you the know, exact the, way the, the rabbits are shaped, those kind of rabbits mm -hmm, are shaped. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the eagle took probably about, um, I'd say about 20 hours on the eagle or less. Let's get him, he's, well, he's not quite, I mean, you know, he's got this part that you'd have to cut out but and then you made a base I and attached base. it to the base all right uh-huh and i bought the uh, purchased the eyes for that too did you have to use a saw oh to yeah cut I had this to, yes i had to shape the whole thing with the bandsaw uh-huh and uh, but then again you've got a lot of detail in these feathers yeah, one of the feathers are detailed like the other one yeah wow anyway it's um uh, and I've done a lot of these with uh, on canes, mm -hmm. and uh, our group our group is very benevolent with what their work. We uh, we give the work a lot of times from canes to veterans coming back from Afghanistan and other places over at Lawton, mm -hmm. Port Sill, and mm -hmm. so we took probably a dozen or so canes to Port Sill and gave those to some of the guys that were disabled. That is a that's a very wonderful act. I well, mean, what a nice service. It's a little to... thing on our part, but that was. It, uh, it can mean a lot, our... though. And they needed them because they didn't have anything. Sometimes the government will give you an old metal cane, mm -hmm. but they're ugly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And everybody, they all to, look alike. cane ought to be beautiful. And one thing you pointed out is that one of the unique things about being an artisan that who carves is that every piece you make 
is different. It's unique. unique. And I can try to carve the same thing and it will turn out differently because I'm not a machine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And, right. And I don't want it to be the same. I like everything to be different that I do. And um, let's let's talk about these spoons here because I think you can show us one of the tools that we haven't really looked at that you said you would use to make a spoon. And I did not bring my wood burning equipment with me. I used a lot of that in order to do some of the detail on mm -hmm. the rope. Mm -hmm. Most of that is just done with a uh, smaller V tool than this one and this type of knife, this type of knife and a V tool. Mm -hmm. And I can do, and this also, this is, is a scooper. Is this a bat? Is this basswood? Yes. Okay. No, this is birch. Oh, okay. Okay. This is what cabinets and kitchens are made mm -hmm. out of. I had a friend that was in the kitchen making business here and now. And uh, so he had a lot of different pieces of wood left over. So we would take those pieces of wood and turn them into love spoons and things like that. Mm -hmm. This is the same type of wood. And what's difficult about this one is the rope effect. That's very, I was that's just hard to carve. looking at that, and that's hand carved. That's hand carved out of one piece. Wow. And um, I should have brought my angel. I did an angel for one of my projects out of one piece, very detailed uh, wings and all, uh -huh. and uh, out of one piece of wood. And they're very time consuming and, too. And so this, um, in order to make this- was This was difficult to leave that heart in there. That heart is, part of the wood left in her and I carved around it. Wow. Now that is, I thought maybe you had, you <laughs> and I glued used, that, but no, that is, no. you said one That's piece. That's part of the wood. I, I don't like gluing pieces on. Uh -huh. I like mine to be one piece. So to scoop that out, you can show us probably on this one right this here, one right how here. that particular one, tool works. I think yes. it, it's over there. This one right here is good for carving out because you can scoop with it and change the grain as it goes, whichever direction you need to go. Then it takes, we have other kind of power tools that we put burrs on them, sanders on the tips, where you can really smooth it out inside. Right, right, because this this is just as smooth as it can be. Oh, yes. There's... They're called love spoons, and I've I've got a book on them, but I've I've done a dozen of these mm -hmm. or more. Different, every one of them are different. And and so, okay, so you've got this rough piece of wood. You You decide what you're going to make out of it, and you saw it down or whatever you have to do to get the basic rough shape, shape rough right. shape and then you get these tools out and like you have multiple v tools and so some take more wood some take less different I, size right. knives and i may have i'll have twice as many tools time i get through the project mm -hmm. um, at least out because every tool does something different Every size does something different. I said it looked like he was about to perform surgery up here with his little <laughs> tool thing. Uh, without getting into what that tool does. And then this is the same V tool here, but it's very small. Oh, very you small. You get very intricate with uh -huh, that. Uh -huh. And you can't see it very well with the camera probably. But I mean, but, obvious, you can see how tiny yes. the tip of it is. And so. if I want it, when I'm doing something like this and I want it smaller, and I can do that and make it a lot smaller. Oh, or and go, you can go a little. go in between there and make uh -huh. it look like it's and just Very keep nice. adding them. And just so, add texture. And I to keep them without getting dull. And I have sharpening tools to do that, but it's very sh hard to sharpen V tools properly. But I, so I keep devices on them like corks and things mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. so they won't be hitting the tip. Otherwise I have to do it more, a lot more often. Right. This is, I use this thing all the time because when right, Every, before I start carving, I always use a strop. Mm -hmm. It's just a piece of leather glued to this handle that I made. And, uh, and you do that every time and that makes it back like a razor again. It just takes that yeah. edge and just straightens it, straightens, it out. straightens it out. If you look at an edge of a knife under a microscope, it looks like a mountain range. It's all jagged, uh -huh. it's not smooth, but you get as smooth as you can as humanly possible. But the stropping really does a good job. And you can't sharpen any knife without stropping it as a final result. As the, the final very last, action, the finest. The final action. Um, like if you were sanding something and you came back with the finest sandpaper or and whatever, that would be. Finest grit, grit, like maybe a 400 or, uh -huh. or 600. Uh -huh. So, and then I take, uh, and sharpening my knives sometimes before I do the strop, I'll take, this is a 400 grit 
paper, uh, sandpaper, sandpaper I, I glued right. onto this uh -huh. particular one. There's a train on the back of that one that I did with a wood burning tool and that that's wood burning too. Um, and so this will ring it down to the point where you're really ready for the strut because it's so fine. It won't mm -hmm. take any metal off really. Mm -hmm. So I have different tools to do that with. You can, it's kind of like people that collect guns or fishing equipment or anything else. You always need another piece and you can't have too much. Right. <laughs> so, so you, you go through and you use all these tools and then you do start sanding, right? Uh, sanding I mean, is the last process. And that's the part I like the least. Most carvers do not like to sand, but it's necessary mm -hmm. because if you want to get all the little final rough edges off. Right. I mean, to get something smooth you're going to have to sand. And, and so how many different sandings do you do? I would say at least four or five. I start with the roughest grit to get it down fast. Mm -hmm. um, and then I do finer each time down to finally maybe a 400. 400 is really fine. Right. That's so nice. probably a 220 is all you need on most things. Uh -huh. And so that gets it pretty smooth. And uh, when I and get, I noticed you had a tack cloth in in your box when you were. Do you go after every sanding? Do you go over it with a tack cloth, no, or do you blow I go, it, or I <laughs> blow off uh -huh, the dust and keep uh -huh. going till, till the final thing? Now, when you're talking about right before I put the finish on, yes, I may do that. Mm -hmm. I'll take a cloth. Sometimes I would take a wet cloth and wipe it down, and uh, be sure and get all the dust off. Otherwise, you'll right. have little bumps. So uh, yeah, right, exactly. And so I like the finish to be smooth. Now all of them are. These are fairly glossy. I don't use gloss on everything. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I use semi-gloss, sometimes I use flat, depending upon what I want it to look like. Mm -hmm. And But you need a finish on there. And sometimes I'll make a part, uh, oh. I don't finish it. I haven't finished oh. this one yet. Well, let's um, let's look at these canes that you brought. Okay. This, because I think these are these are pretty awesome. This one especially, y'all, I all of a sudden, I'm kind of crazy about a cane, uh, well, a staff. Staff. This is a staff. You can tell it's much taller. Um, but this staff, I'm, I'm going to turn it sideways here so we can see it. This is, he, he said, what, what's on that? And I began looking at it. It's the Chisholm Trail. He starts it right down here south of San Antonio and takes it all the way up. He's got the cities burned in here, Red River Station. There's a Longhorn over here there's a buffalo there on the top i mean this is this is the coolest i i love this that's Rick. Rivers. i know that's one of the reason i've had a lot of people try to buy it and i did sell it too yeah here's duncan right here we've even got duncan yep. on there duncan. uh i addington warica rush springs is on there all the way and the up. scale i did the even. scale with a map but i looked at a map and made it scale down Okay, so the, yeah, this is even to scale. This is just so cool. Here's where the trail split comes back together all the way up. There he goes to Kansas, all the way up to Abilene. I mean, this is this is just the coolest piece. This is Aspen. I love Aspen, but it's hard for me to acquire it because I I, I don't have a source. But it's this is for cowboys getting off of their horse too, uh -huh. that have a bad leg. You see, right? But a carver had this, a fellow carver, and in his yard, he says, I've had this piece of aspen out there for years. I don't need it. You want it? Sure, I'll do something with it. So he gave it to me. Someone, aspen grows under the ground and comes up like cane. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is where the root took off another direction. That's the only way you can get a handle that's even 90 degrees like that. Other tree limbs do not grow with 90 degree angle handles. Right. So it'd been chopped down with an ax and that was just a bunch of chopped up pieces of wood here and all over Real there. Rough. So I, I cleaned it all out and then I started putting in wood burnings and painting mm -hmm. and all that. And oh yeah, there's a, looks like an elk up yeah. in there and there's a Native American right there. Uh, uh, this is just, this is a piece of wolf, art. Uh, my brand is there. Oh, well, same really? brand is on my belt. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> and my ring. This is, I mean, this is a piece of art. Absolutely. That is one of my favorites. Stage. And so I've held on to it a long time. Oh, while. yeah. Yeah. But uh, and so, so you said it was unfinished. Well, I, you know, I, I've debated putting more tongue oil on it. One of my finishes I like to use on some objects like canes and things are tongue oil. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes I use other clear acrylics, other different types of finishes. And um, 
So. And so this next one is the cane you made for yourself. Well, I thought if I ever need a cane, I hope right. I don't. Right, he doesn't use one, y'all. I don't use one, but if I ever do, this is crepe myrtle, and I stained oh. it. I stained it after I finished, sanded it, sanded it. You know, crepe myrtle really has a lot of character Feel on heavy the wood. Does. Wow. And so then I, I did the horse, uh -huh. and then I attached it, uh -huh. and that's a horse with the saddle. With the saddle, yeah. Yeah. Very nice, very that is a very awesome. I just, I don't know why I never thought about using crepe myrtle wood, but it has so much character. Well, it is, it you does, know? it's straight. Uh-huh. And, and it's. All kinds of knots and things. It on. does. It, it's, it's, I mean, it's bumpy, but it's not rough. It's no. just. I, no, there were some small limbs I had to trim off. That's a. But I, I, did, I, I don't want it perfect smooth. I like to leave character to mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And then places where I take some of the extra wood off, I just. I suck my brand in there, but um, I put my brand on everything I make like most people do. Right. right. Um, the other one is a little more intricate. It's out of walnut. I would never do a second one of this. <laughs> this is a one and done. Is that what? One and done. See the balls in there? Oh. The balls roll back and forth and you have to carve the balls while they're inside. Wow. That is... I don't know how long that took. Holy cow. And if you carve a little too much, then well, it's hard. Well, you messed it up. <laughs> you, 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 just go in, you just work in there and you end up with the kind of a roundish piece in the middle uh -huh. and you keep cutting around the edges and you keep cutting around it. And then, what a challenge. Oh, it's, it's a real hard challenge. I won't do another one. How long did that take? Oh, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't guess. Months and months. Wow. Fooling with it. And my Did wife you, uses this one. Oh, she, gosh. she didn't like using a cane, but she's got a bum knee right now. And so she likes this occasion. So did you just get frustrated sometimes and have to walk away from it? I said, why did I start there? Because <laughs> now I, I have to finish I mean, it's kind of it. like carving a ship inside of a bottle. Right. I mean, how long does that take? Right. Oh, my how goodness. Is that, that is. So that one is, I never, I, I don't know. I just had never thought about how you would do something like that. Well, but Carolyn is so special. We did the circle of love, like right, I think I right. told you. Mm -hmm. And the proceeds from this. So I'm going to get this. Excuse I, me. Um, jump across I here. said, she's such a dear that I said, well, before we did the play, I said, I'm going to carve a little symbol to show what I think of you. Isn't that sweet? So it sat on the, uh, the table while we were doing the play. Uh-huh. Love letters. Uh-huh. That's just what a special. It's not piece. intricate, right? But it's uh, it's kind of memorable that way. It, oh, it, absolutely! And but it's beautiful. I mean, the grain and everything on this wood is very that's pretty. Walnut. That's walnut. Very pretty, and it's it's like you can see, yes. like this piece here where it's lighter on the outside and then True. darker, just like that piece is. So interesting. I'm always, I love to look look at different types of wood grain and things like that. What is nature? It's, uh, you know, it's part of our our life. It's what comes with the earth, mm -hmm. and it's like the lapidary I talked about, or with rocks, mm -hmm. or with wood. It's natural. It's beautiful, and plastic doesn't turn me on, <laughs> and right. nor, nor does rosin. Right. And I've worked with rosin on things too, but uh, wood is natural. It's beautiful. It's nice to touch. Mm -hmm. I think wood has a spirit within it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the flutes, whenever Dwayne plays a flute, has a lot of spirit in it. If you've heard him, mm -hmm. you know he's an artist and he has a perfect ear. Mm -hmm. So when you could have him on, you need to, because right. he is very- He has, uh, he has just he's come one, up here sometimes and walked through the Well, he's uh, one, been one of your board members played. too. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, and so I encouraged mm -hmm. him to, and them to put him on the board after I left because I knew they needed somebody like him. Mm -hmm. And this is this I didn't make it, but that's burl wood right there. And I have some oh. burl. I could make that handle, but I just I made another handle like that for another knife, but I didn't bring it. It's a very interesting piece, isn't um, it? The way the grain yes, very specialized. And where does this kind of tree grow? Everywhere that like here in Yeah, Oklahoma? I don't even know what kind of tree it is. It's a burl wood, which means uh usually a fungus or a disease gets into a tree and it makes a big knot on it on the side of the trunk. 
and, and sometimes you, you what you do is you take that and you slice into that and the wood just goes all kinds of directions that's what i was noticing it's just there's waviness oh, yeah. and all kinds of things so yes. that comes that's what a knot it grew a under torment knot on a tree. it grew under torment uh -huh. <laughs> right yeah and it looks like there's yeah. chaos in that wood right there and i have a bunch of burl wood too uh, people just call you and say i have some wood do you want it and i say well what kind is it mm -hmm. and so sometimes i'll take it sometimes i don't because i I only have a limited space for it. Right. But I, I like to get more of this to top of wood because it's easy to carve. It's very beautiful. And you can make so many nice things with it. Mm -hmm. um, so. And so uh, do you, I mean, is that something the Wood Carvers Association, do those, do you guys take wood that oh, people have? Yeah. If they're- Well, it depends. Oh. If somebody calls and says, is there some wood like a, I don't know, whichever kind that, most of the people offer trees that you don't want, like uh, elder or see elms and oak right, trees and right. things. Oak's beautiful wood, but it's too hard to work with. That's more for people making cabinets and furniture mm -hmm, and things like mm -hmm. this, not wood carving. Mm -hmm. But uh, crepe myrtles, crepe myrtles or catapas? Not for carving so much crepe myrtle, but for, for canes. staffs and canes uh -huh. like that, because it's very hard once it dries. Mm -hmm. It's like working with walnut. You said that you can use this right Even when it's green, right you away. can cut the tree down and I can take and use the top of it. Hmm. I wonder why so that makes it, it able to do that. Just the way nature made it. But the other, wood, the other wood, how long would it take for it to be? Like if you were going to make something out of a crepe myrtle, how long would it take for you well, to be able to do that? Well, if I want to use the staff, I let it season for a few months. Really? Yeah, it's usually good enough. Uh -huh. If it's hot enough, in a few months I'll do it. Wintertime, of course, nothing seasons. And can you, you just, just tell by looking at it if it's I can ready? tell by the feel of it. I can stick a knife blade in and see how easy it is. Uh -huh. So it gets harder as it gets older. And um, and I don't often, I strip it while it's green okay. to get the bark off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I'll let it dry. Hmm. But and I can use any kind of wood or limb. Right. I get people bring in limbs from different kinds of trees. If it's the right kind of tree. Or wood, I can make a staff. Out of. So, if someone was going to just get started in this, yes, how many tools would they need, or could they? Could someone come to one of the meetings yes. and just use some tools that yes. other people had? You guys I would have, suggest that's that, an okay thing. First of all, before you buy anything, I would suggest that you come to a meeting, get to know some of the carvers. They're every one of ready to help you do things. Because I know a lot of new ones have come in. I have made a knife and given it to them. And so uh, if they want to learn to carve, they need to come in and see if they like dealing with that mm. or not. Some people may say, yeah, I don't know if I want to do that anymore or not. It's kind of like a lot of things. You need to try it first. Right. Then if you like it, then you, we can tell you what tools to buy. Because I can tell you each one. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of tools I don't really use that much. And just so. kind of like a tool like this, like how much of an investment would... Oh, Are these... that is probably a, uh, I forgot what I paid for this, but I think that is probably a $35, $40 tool. And do these numbers yeah. indicate size? Or... Yes, okay. yes, I have. I usually have, I like two or three sizes of each one. Mm -hmm. And then you accumulate and some break or whatever, and then I cast them aside and start with some more or redo them. So, so you just it, accumulate. Them. Right, so, so it's a, it would be a little bit of an investment. And what, I mean, what a great benefit, though, that these carvers are willing to, you know, yes. let you come and, and give it a shot before you spend that kind of money. So I love that. Thank you, wood carvers. Yes, you know? well, we're always happy to have more people because, and ladies, too, because mm -hmm. I know that that women are just as talented or more so than the guys are. Right. And we need someone to keep everything civil, too. <laughs> And nice, so we need ladies in there. So. I hear you. Yeah, I hear yeah. what you're saying. <laughs> guys can guys can get out of hand, a little bit. but but we have a good group group that really gets along. They enjoy each other. They help each other. Mm -hmm. If you need something, wood. I mean, I give wood. They give me wood. Whatever you want, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's just a good hobby, and it's like anything else. If you love people, or people you have a lot in common with, which is other people. Mm -hmm then it's fun to do. Mm -hmm. And I like the creativeness of it. Uh, creating something rather than I can do other kinds of things, but I like to create and something that is my work. Right. I mean, you know, you you take just a piece of wood, That's, you know. That was a limb. Just 
just a piece of a tree Mm -hmm. and you end up creating, you know, something that's just, it tells a story or it's a a tool or it's a, it's something that make you smile. You can hang it. It creates creates memories. Right. I mean, it's just, it's a great art form. And I, I'm so glad that we have a, a group of people who are, who do this, who are willing to invest in young people or or just novice, inexperienced people who might want to give it a try. Let me, uh, let me ask you this. If you have, is it hard on your joints or? It can be, uh, if you start getting older and once I turned 39, I started, (laughs) I started to get a little bit of arthritis in my hands when you wake up, Right. you have to work it out. But uh, this is why the shape of the handle is so important. But some, but you can, if your hands start bothering you, you can, you can uh, lay them down. But basically, it's hard on the hands if you're trying to do the hard wood mm-hmm. and it doesn't want to give and you push and push a lot. And uh, like I was going to say earlier, reason some people with knives, I've never really cut myself other than a small nick one time, a long time ago. But if you use it, just like the dentist does, he braces for when he's in your mouth. He doesn't just start shoving like that. Uh-huh. And people that whittle like this, yeah. you never do that. You always have control of where the knife blade's going, uh-huh. to or from, uh-huh. mainly away from. And you brace it with this hand and that, uh-huh. rather than right. being wild with it. That's right. when you slip. You don't want yeah. the knife to ever slip. Yeah, that's why you have the blood circle. That's right. <laughs> and you take and it away. From first thing we work on is you stay safe and you have one of these. Uh-huh. That's about $12 for a glove and that's worth it. But yeah, I was going to say. Otherwise, it's a trip to the hospital. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I just feel like we, you've given us so much really good information today. And just, I mean, you make this seem like it's very doable. It is. And if I can do it, enjoyable. anyone can do it because I did not, did not have much talent towards this. Well, but you've created some really fantastic pieces, and I'm sure this is a smidge of all the things you've made over oh, the yeah, years. Yeah, this is probably 2% or 1% of all the things I've made, and most of it I've given away. Family members are saying, no, don't give me any more carvings. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, more, no more carvings no, for my birthday. They don't really say <laughs> that, but you know. And so on. But you can also make things that are useful, like handles oh. to re- reuse things, you know, to where yeah. everything is doesn't have to be discarded. I'm kind of a big recycler. Well, yes, it's like and these butcher shop. I, I got two or three of these from a butcher shop. And they were going to throw them away in the trash. Mm-hmm. I said, I can make something beautiful out of that and use it. Right. So, I, you know, there's a, it's a great way to reuse things. And um, you don't go out and cut down a whole bunch of trees you no, take no. trees that someone else has already cut down That's and right. so it's it's not completely wasting all of that wood it means it's not going to be burned you, you never know, want so, to destroy a good tree right nature will do that in a way the highest storms and everything mm-hmm, else will do that mm-hmm. for you that's for sure but rick thank you so well, much thank this you is, for asking me this is be here yeah this is very informative and um really fun to see all these things oh um he brought a couple of magazines because he said these are sources of really good ideas. Good ideas and a lot of good information. I think all the carvers look at these magazines at various times. It's, various it kind purposes. of makes it like I'll find a recipe or something in a, yes. in a magazine. Yes. And then I'll just kind of make it my own recipe by, you know, tweaking little things here and there. And I bet you can do the same thing. And some thing. of the things they have... Um, there's sketches and diagrams and some. And do of they have like step by step? So some once of in a while they do. Like there's they, there's things there. Like the chip, crochet like the, magazine. Like has the all chip the carving you saw there. We didn't discuss mm-hmm. that, but chip carving is where you cut into the wood and make indentions oh, into the okay. wood. Oh, okay, right. You, you have a piece there when you turn it uh-huh. into a plate. But anyway, right. Uh, there's all kinds of carving. Uh-huh. I would say that uh, it's really easy to learn. And it's very enjoyable. Mm-hmm. I, I enjoy it more than I do my, even my watercolors or any other things I do. Right. So um, speaking of that, I mean, would you want to come on another time and bring some of your paintings and show us some of that I'm stuff? I'm just about ready to give some of them away. I won't have any. I'll have to do new ones. <laughs> oh, well, hey, we might have to get some brand new. I have a new great-grandson, so I painted a ship and a, and a plane duel, a World War One plane duel. 
for him. Oh, that's Lord. fun. Wow, that's nice. So, Very nice. Well, Rick, thank you again. Well, thank you. This has been so great. And uh, whenever it's time to sign off, we say happy trails. Happy trails. Yes, are you ready? And happy carving. <laughs> happy carving. Okay. And come to the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center. You're missing something if you've never been here. That's right. Thank you very much. So let's tell them happy trails. Happy trails. Bye, guys. Happy trails. Happy trails. Invite me back sometime. Well, I will.